Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, we're going to try and do our study this afternoon, a bit later today, but it doesn't matter. It's the important thing is that we do study the Word of God and we know what God is saying to us. So let's find my paperwork. We're today we're going to study in Amos. What's over there? Amos chapter 3 we're looking at today. Yes, let's find it in the Bible. Amos chapter 3. Okay, so let's open in prayer. Lord, I thank you that we can study your word together. We can study your word using these outlines and also, Lord, what you reveal to us as we study them. So I pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive from you today. Lord, that we will know what you are saying to us and we will be challenged even in today's day and age, even though I must prophesied many years ago, Lord, that the word of God is still appropriate to us today. So help us as we study your word today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's have a look here. Where are we? Chapter 3. Verse 3. Some of the headings in here, it says, Chapter 3, Judgment against Moab for Injustice. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. When the incident is not recorded, but reveals a spirit of injustice that goes beyond death. Verse 2 to 3. The proud nation was brought to extinction by Nebuchadnezzar. And then two judgment on Judah and Jerusalem and Israel. Judgment against Judah for despising the law. Chapter 2 verse 4 and 5. Judah had the law of God and despised it. God judged them according to the law. The other nations did not have God's law and were therefore not judged according to it. This is what we studied yesterday. And B. Judgment against Israel for immorality and blasphemy. Chapter 2, verse 6 to 16. Israel, ten tribes, likewise had the law, but they were committing the same sins as the Amorites. God had put the Amorites out of the land. Israel were going to captivity before Judah. And today's heading for chapter 3 is, see, God's charge against the whole house of Israel, of the twelve tribes. Privilege creates responsibility. The higher the blessing, the greater the responsibility. I like that. Let's read that again. Privilege creates responsibility. The higher the blessing, the greater the punishment. That was from J. Bernard McGee of ttb.org if you want a copy of the notes. Two, reason for judgment. Sin separates the people from God and it still separates people from God today. But we have a better, more of an opportunity than they had in those days. We can come through Jesus Christ and ask him to separate us from the sin and, and cleanse us and to make us more like him. And that we will no longer be separate from God. Hear the word of the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, This is the twelve tribes. You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth when no gin is prepared for is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret and to his servants the prophets. Believe God still does that today. He reveals he does nothing without revealing his will first to his servants the prophets. The lion hath roared who will not fear. The Lord God has spoken who can but prophesy. Publish in the palaces of Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and to say assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria 
and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who spoke up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, An adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, As a shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs, or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria, in the corners of a bed, and in Damascus, or in a crouch. Hear ye, and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in that day shall I visit the transgression of Israel upon him, and I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. Let's have a look at this today. Israel's wealthy women were compared to the cows. Okay, oh, wrong, I'm looking at the wrong one. Chapter 3, verse 1, verse 2. God chose Israel to be the people through whom all the other nations of the world could fall know him. He made his promise to Abraham, father of the Israelites, in Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Israel didn't have to do anything to be chosen. God had given them this special privilege because he wanted to, not because they deserved special treatment. Deuteronomy 9, verse 46. Pride in the, the privileged position, however, hardened Israel to the word of God and, it, and to the plight of the others. Verse 3. When you have an unresolved conflict with someone, you may feel that a wall separates you from that person. The joy of being with a close friend is the closeness God wants us to have with him. If your sin has put a wall of separation between you and God, ask him to forgive you so you can again walk with him as with a close friend. It is, you know, you can understand that, can we, when we've fallen out with a close friend? And sometimes it's hard, isn't it, you know, not to have their friendship. But then when we put the right with them and we forgive them or they forgive us and we truly repent and turn away from what we have done and that friendship is renewed. And it's the same with God. Our friendship can be renewed. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Means the Lord himself would be sending disaster to Israel. Verse 7, even in anger, God is merciful. He always warned his people through prophets before punishing them. Warnings about sin and judgment apply to people today, just as they did to Israel. If we have been warned about our sin, we have no excuse when punishment comes. We've discussed this in, in when we studied Ezekiel. We have to give the message. We must proclaim what God has said. If we don't, we are responsible for the sins of others. But if we faithfully proclaim the word of God and we do what he's asked us to do, then obviously God will bless us. But if they refuse the message, then that's their responsibility. Warnings about sins, judge, sin and judgment apply to people today, just as they did to Israel. If we have been warned about our sin, yeah, God could be telling us and convicting us and showing us of our sins. And if we refuse to acknowledge that sin and repent of it, we have no excuse when punishment comes. God had warned his people through his prophets so they could not rationalise or complain when he punished them for refusing to repent. And that same applies to us today. If we refuse to repent, then we have to accept the consequences of that. Do not take lightly warnings in God's word about judgment. His warnings are a way of showing you mercy. He doesn't want you to be punished. He wants you to stop in your tracks and repent and turn to him. He doesn't want anyone to suffer. But that's why he gives us the opportunity. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time, the Bible teaches us. Verse 9. Amos pictured Philistia and Egypt coming to witness Israel's great sins. 
Even Israel's most wicked neighbours would have witnessed God's judgment of Israel's sins. See, <coughs> excuse me, let's get a drink. The thing being is that God is always warning us, and we're an example, as Israel was to the other nations of the world, you know, we're an example to those around us. And I was listening to something earlier today, and he was talking about the fact that we, we as Christians, tend to use a different language to what the world uses. And yet, it was saying that we mustn't change our language to suit them, because we are supposed to be different to the world. Our speech, our actions and our behaviour must be different from the world. And, we, and they call it Christianese, where we speak. As we read the Bible, we speak with words, but the Bible, but God wants us to do that. He wants us to be different, radically different. Excuse me. You know, he doesn't want us to, act, you know, change the way that we speak. People say, oh, it's religiosity and religious words. No, no, we must speak the word of God and we must not change that just to make people think people are going to understand us. If people don't understand, they can ask, and they, we can explain to them the word of God. We can explain to them what God is saying. But do not change the way you act or behave as Christians to suit the people around you, because God wants us to be different. He wants people to be attracted to us and to him, because we are different. Yeah. Let's keep reading this. I think this is excellent today. God was speaking to me and challenging me when I was listening to another program on YouTube earlier today. Prophetic called Power from uh, Glasgow uh, Prophetic, Prophetic Centre with Emma Stark and visitors. You can have a look on Facebook on YouTube if you want to hear these messages. But I thought, yes, it rang a chord with me. Yes. We try to simplify things, and yet if we preach it as it is, God and the Holy Spirit will do the rest of the work. We must proclaim the word of God, and that's what our job is. Verse 10. Israel had forgotten how to do what was right. The more they sinned, the harder it was to remember what God wanted. The same is true for us. The more we continue in a particular sin, it's harder for us to stop doing that. It becomes a habit. They say, I've heard it said that it takes two to three weeks to learn a new habit or to stop or break an old habit by consistently trying. You know, it's the same with sin. Once you got into a habit of doing something, it's hard to break that. But then we can come to God and ask him, would you break... Take that away from us. Take that desire from us. God help us to stop doing exactly the things and saying the things that we used to say before. God wants to change men and women's lives. We have to be different than the world and other people. Let's carry on here. The harder it is, the same is true for us. The longer we fail to deal with sin, the greater it is to hold on us the greater the sins hold on us. Finally, we forget what it means to do right. Are you on the verge of forgetting what's right and what's wrong? Verse 11. The approaching adversary was Assyria, who conquered the nation and did as Amos predicted. The people were scattered to foreign lands, and foreigners were placed in the land to keep the peace. Israel's leaders had robbed their defenceless fellow countrymen and now they would be rendered defenceless themselves by the Assyrians. Amos added that even if they tried to repent, then it would be too late. But well, we are lucky at this more present moment in time, we still have an opportunity to repent. But when Jesus comes back, it will be too late for us to repent then. The destruction would be so complete that nothing of value would be left. They were going to be destroyed because they'd been told and warned and warned. And when that time came, it was too late. Verse 14. God's judgment against Israel's altars showed that he was rejecting Israel's entire religious system because it was polluted. 
God's altar in Jerusalem was a place of protection. 1 Kings 1 verse 49 to 53 And the false altars would soon be gone. Then the people would have no sanctuary, protection or refuge. See 4 verse 4 When judgment came. Let's close the door. My son's home from work so he's chatting to his mother. Right, so there's some very important thoughts in this. But what I'd like to emphasize is the words here. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, first. And I believe there is a need again for prophetic word to come out in our churches, for our own personal lives. And we need to seek God that that would become part of our life that we would accept the prophetic word of God and that God would speak to us through his written word and through his prophetic word. And I believe there is a day and an age coming that we need to make our stand. Let's look at some more of these notes. Israel ten tribes likewise had the law, but they were committing the same sins as the Amorites. God had put the Amorites out of the land. Israel would go into captivity before Judah. See, God charged against the whole house of Israel, 12 tribes, chapter 3, which we just looked at. I'd like to remind the privilege creates responsibility. The higher the blessing, the greater the punishment. The nation occupied a unique relationship to God. She was chosen for a definite, definite purpose. This privilege created a greater responsibility than any other nations had. Verse 3. This is a great principle by which God must judge all nations and individuals. Israel knew God's way. They disagreed with it and departed from it. By this they will be judged. Verse 4 to 15. Judgment upon the entire nation will be severe. The northern kingdom will be judged first. Verses 14 and 15. Well, that's chapter 3 we've done and covered today. So, you know, if that's been of help to you and there's anything in that word that has touched you or ministered to you today, please pray about it and ask God to search your heart and to know his thoughts for you. So, let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can study your word together. Lord, that you were teaching us. Lord, that you still speak to us today. And you have a vital word for us today. And that's that you still speak. And that we can hear your voice through your written word or through the prophetic word. That Lord you are changing us, you are transforming us and making us more like your son. Lord help us to break bad habits in our lives Lord. That would turn us away from you. Lord habits that Lord we would find hard to break on our own. We ask you, Lord, that you will step in by your Holy Spirit and help us to break these habits, Lord. Our thoughts, our words, our deeds, Lord, everything about us. Help us to break those habits in the name of Jesus, that we might be set free. And any spirits, the demonic spirits that have attached themselves to us as a result of our sins, Lord, we renounce them today in the name of Jesus. And that, Lord, as your word said, who your son sets free, is free indeed. Amen. Well, guys, if you've enjoyed this message today, if you've got anything about it, out of it, please share it with your friends and family and like uh, so that many more people will hear the word of God. But I must challenge you, anything I've said here today on this broadcast, I challenge you to check it out for yourself. Do the research. Do the Bible reading. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and he will lead you into all truth. God bless you, God keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you and give him, you his peace, his shalom. Amen.